Hello, welcome to another episode of Ollie's Garage. Today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade the rear brakes to discs on a VW Vanagon. And for this kit, I'm not using any of the popular ones in the United States. I'm using the Epitech kit, which allows you to pick your rotors, your pads, all that stuff. So they just sell you the adapters. You can choose anything else yourself then. There's three main types of rear disc conversions that Epitech sells. The first one run the T4 rear disc, which are around 280 millimeters. Then there's the option that I chose, which uses the 268 millimeter discs. Both of these you can buy with and without the hubs, which is why I have those two circles there. I chose without the hubs because I machine mine. I'll talk about that a little bit later. And finally, there's their big brake option, which I did not choose to use. Let's start off by talking about what actually comes in the kit when you purchase it from Epitech. So what you're going to get is one of these really nice adapters right here, Epitech right there, as you can see. The next thing that's going to be in there is going to be these two bolts. They actually just go right here. Then you're going to have a longer and a shorter little bolt with some washers and these two ones as well that are going to be used for mounting your caliper. Finally, the last thing that comes in the kit is going to be right here, this ring. I actually already have this installed on my hub, and this is going to be the centering ring for that brake rotor when we place this on the hub because the diameter of the brake rotor is larger than this hub. You can also elect to purchase an Epitech kit that comes with rear hubs already included. I elected not to do that. I just had my machine so that the outside diameter was approximately 140 millimeters. They just need to fit inside that brake disc. With this kit, you can choose the type of pads you want to run, the rotor brand you want to run, as well as the calipers that you want to run. And it is extremely reasonably priced as well. The last part about this brake kit is if you get your hubs machined, you need to press out the original studs and put in longer studs. These are 35 millimeter studs from the factory. And as you can see, they're 10 millimeters shorter than my 45 here. And since that brake disc is thicker than the original brake drum, we need to put these longer studs in so that we have enough stud engagement when we screw our lug nuts on. Otherwise, the lug nuts will only screw on two or three turns, and that's never enough to hold everything together when you're going down the highway at, you know, high speeds, because now obviously you have rear brake discs. As always, I'll have part numbers and links for all of these parts in the description, because it's just much easier to put the part numbers down there than me to just read them or put them in the videos. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to install this plate right here. As you can see, I've already removed my stub axle and all of that stuff. It's best to do that on the ground so that you can get that nut loose. But once you have it removed, I ended up replacing all my bearings in here and greasing everything. I've got a video, I'll link it below as well. Now that everything's greased, cleaned, you can see all the grease in there. We are gonna take our new piece and install it. So this adapter plate, these two holes just go towards the bottom. So we'll slide it on just like that. And now we have two bolts. We have a longer one and we have a shorter one. The shorter one goes on top right here. The longer one goes in the bottom coming into this hole right here. I always like to use just a little bit of blue thread locker. This is the medium strength stuff. I feel like it just really keeps everything together and makes me sleep a little bit better at night or makes me a little more calm when I'm driving. And as you can see right here, the longer one goes into the bottom because the bottom has a thicker piece of metal right there. The torque spec for both of these is 22 Newton meters or 14 foot pounds. For the top one, I can't really get a torque wrench on, so we're just gonna make it nice and snug. These are just really holding this plate on. These are not actually mounting this plate necessarily. That's these two bolts. Now we can grab these next two bolts right here, screw them on in. These get torqued to 65 Newton meters or 47 foot pounds. Now it's time to install this hub, but first let me get rid of all the extra grease in there. We can grab the new axle nut and we can start screwing it on. For now, hand tight is just fine. We just want to get this all nice and secure. We'll torque this when it gets on the ground. I've got my caliper bracket and the caliper came with all these guide pins. So what you do is you basically just slide the rubber on over and then the guide pin will go in just like that. We've got this caliper guide pin grease right here. So I'm just going to take a little bit out, grease the guide pins just a little. You don't want to make it too thick because otherwise it actually won't make it all the way into the hole there. Grease a little bit of this rubber as well. With the guide pins installed and the rubber boots now on, we're going to take these bolts here and just screw them on in. Snug for now is just fine. Okay, 
Now it is time to install our pads. I didn't film the assembly because it's a bit challenging, but the key here is that we have the caliper brackets, these clips need to get inserted right here, and then the pads go in. You just kind of squeeze the pads in and push them over. I lubricate everything where it's rubbing, so basically right in here, and then along here, and also along here. That grease in those contact spots is to keep it from squeaking. Make sure to wipe down your brake discs. They always come with a greasy protective coating on them. So you want to make sure you wipe that down first. These are also some of the nicest discs that I've ever purchased. They're painted here and here as well. Blue Point, I believe, is who made these. These are really nice. These are for a VW Chagan. Those actually never sold in the States, so I just ordered these off eBay. And then they came, and they were very reasonably priced also. The one thing that I haven't done for this hub is tap it for this little retaining screw here, but that's okay. We're still just going to slide this sucker on, just like that. Now we can grab our caliper, slide it over the disc. And then these two screws, the last ones in the kit, just go into that caliper bracket right here. Torque spec for these two bolts is 65 newton meters or 48 foot pounds. I can't really get a torque wrench in here, so we're just gonna make them nice and tight. Now that we have the caliper mounted, we can torque this last bolt right here. This could be 35 newton meters or 26 foot pounds. Let's use the wrench to counter hold that pin in there. The last step is going to be to connect this parking brake cable. So all that you need to do is just slide it in through this hole right here, get this little round piece right into this lever, and then grab yourself your little parking brake cable clip, and then slide it on right here. It's supposed to basically just hold this parking brake cable from slipping out of that position right there. I still need to come up with a way to mount this cable up here, but aside from that, coming towards the front of the vehicle, Parking brake cable like normal slides through this little grommet right here and then up here and then we just attach it to this little divider thing. Here I just used an M6 by 1.0 nut in here and then I used the same M6 by 1.0 nuts for these two as well. I painted this and kind of boogered it up in the tightening process. As of right now with everything tightened down it should work just fine where when I pull tension on it it holds the brake. Here I got a custom brake line made. I could have put a banjo bolt on here, but I just elected to go with the M12 by 1.0 and this is a 90 with the stainless hose and it's got this sleeve over it and then it runs up into the front. So we're just gonna screw this on in here. And just nice and snug. Here's a quick shot of how that brake line is running. So it just goes from that caliper. It's going right over top that trailing arm. And then from there, it goes right to the stock location where the brake line was mounted in the past. The last step will be to torque these to 360 foot-pounds or 500 newton meters. It's on jack sand, so I'm just going to put this chalk underneath and that'll hold against it, hopefully. Let's see what happens. That ought to be tight. Now that these nuts are nice and torqued, we can put in our cotter pin. Now that it's all connected, it's time to give the old brakes a bleed. Right rear, here we go. I've been driving around with that rear disc conversion for about a year now, and I can say I really like how it's performing. The handbrake seems to work well, and I can stop really well as well. I haven't done a super scientific test measuring the angle of the hill and seeing if the handbrake holds, but I have to say some of the complaints that I see online of, oh, the handbrake doesn't work well, I'm not experiencing any of those. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them, and thanks for watching.